deal about adding and subtracting money, sometimes about how much total purchase costs and what your change is. So we got four items listed at the top and we have a story problem. If you bought a wind-up toy and paid with a $5 bill, what would your change be? So the wind-up toy is right here, costs 68 cents. So first in my head is which is bigger, $5 or 68 cents? $5. When I write the $5, I'm going to write it as $5 and no cents. Anytime I'm working with decimals, I want to make sure I line up my decimal points like buttons on the shirt. So my 68 cents is going there. And I'm getting change back. I better be subtracting. Because if you get more change back than you're paying with, let me know. I want to go shop at that store all the time. 0 minus 8, I can't do. So the 0 is coming over to us. Neighbor to borrow. Hey, neighbor, can I borrow from you? No, I don't have anything, but I have a neighbor that I think I can go borrow from. So the 5 becomes a 4. 0 becomes 10. Now the 1's place comes back to borrow from the 10's. Makes him go to 9 10's. And he goes to 10. I just have 10 minus 8 is 2. 9 minus 6 is 3. 4 minus nothing is 4. And make sure you get that decimal point lined up in there just like buttons on the shirt. Let's try another one. How much would it cost for a puzzle in a wagon? So we're buying the puzzle, we're buying the wagon. Which number is bigger? The wagon is at $26.84. Make sure when I put the puzzle underneath, I line up the decimal points like buttons on the shirt. And what do I need to do with those numbers? How much would it cost for a puzzle and a wagon? I'm buying both of them. It's sort of like when you go through the checkout line at the store. Beep, beep, as this uses the barcode scanner. They're adding them together to get a total price. So I'm going to add 4 plus 3 is 7. 8 plus 9 is 17, so I'm carrying my 1 up here. 1 and 6 is 7, plus 4 more is 11. Carry my 1 again. Plus 2 is 3. And line up my decimal points, like buttons on the shirt. And when I check my answer, just to be sure, is $31 more than both of my items? Yes, so that makes sense. If I got an answer that was less, you know, like if I had forgotten to carry this one right here and I ended up with $21, that wouldn't make any sense because that's less than the price of the wagon. If you bought a slinky and a puzzle and paid with a $10 bill, what would your change be? So I'm buying two things, slinky and puzzle, and then I'm going to pay with a $10 bill. We got two steps going on here. Think about what they would do in the store. If you were buying two different items, do you go up to the checkout and pay for one of them, and they give you change back, and then you pay for the other one, and they give you change back? No, because there's people who's buying, like when mom does the grocery shop shopping, she's buying hundreds of things at a time, probably. So the first thing we need to do is run these through the checkout line. And I'm putting the bigger number on top, lining up my decimal point, and I'm going to total up my price. Keep it 10, carry my 1, 15, carry my 1, 7. $7.50. Seven That's what, should, what the checkout lady or checkout person would say to me. That's going to cost $7.50. And so we're not worried about tax on this. That's already been figured in somehow. So now I need my change back from a 10. Change always means I'm going to be subtracting. $10 is more than $7.50. So I'm going to subtract that. 0 minus 0 is 0. Ah, so if I have a 0, I don't always have to go borrow. I'm only going to borrow if I need to. 0 minus 5, I can't do. So he comes to borrow from his neighbor. Can I borrow from your neighbor? No, but i got a neighbor I can borrow from. So 1 becomes 0, and he becomes 10. Now the 10's place. The 10's place comes back and borrows from the ones place, makes him a 9, and he becomes 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 7 is 2. Nothing minus nothing is nothing. $2.50. And in my head, I just think real fast, if I take 2.5 plus 7.5, will that add up to 10? Because 7 plus 2 would be 9, and a half a dollar and a half a dollar. Oh, yeah, that's $10. Or if I made a mistake and I ended up with 350 for an answer, 7 plus 3 is already 10, and then I've still got all that change left, which does not mean that it's going over 10 dollars. 
How much would it cost to buy the comic book and the fake glasses? Comic book costs more. No, comic book is cost less. The fake glasses cost more. We're putting three dollars and twenty eight cents down. The comic book is only sixty five cents. At least that's what it said on the cover. That may be an old Hulk one. And all we want to know is how much it would cost to buy these, so we're going to add the numbers together. 13 carried by 1, there's a 9, nothing to carry. $3.93. Sounds like a bargain. The next one, how much are you paid for the paddle ball with a $10 bill? What's your change? So I know I'm going to be subtracting. And I've got to be paying them more than what it costs, right? So whatever I'm paying with is going on top. Ten dollars minus a dollar forty-nine. Zero minus nine can't do. Can I run over my neighbor? Hey neighbor, can I borrow from you? No, I don't have anything. Let me run to my neighbor. Hey neighbor, can I borrow from you? No, I don't have anything. Let me go borrow from my neighbor. So he becomes a zero. He becomes ten. Now the middle neighbor comes back over, borrows from ten, makes him a nine, and he goes to ten. Now he comes back over, borrows from his neighbor, makes him nine, and he goes to ten. If you notice, if I was borrowing across like a whole, whole, whole row of zeros, they're all going to go to nines, except for the very first guy who borrowed, because he's going to end up with ten. Ten minus nine is one. Nine minus four is five. Nine minus one is eight. Line up my decimal point like buttons on a shirt, and we should get eight dollars and fifty-one cents back, which sounds reasonable. You paid for two Hot Wheels with a $5 bill. What's your change? Two Hot Wheels. So I'm going to take the price of the Hot Wheel. I could take 98 cents times two, or I can add it. So there's only two of them. It's not too bad to go ahead and add. Eight plus eight is 16. Besides that, I get to work on my doubles. Nine plus nine is 18. Plus one is 19. One dollar and 96 cents. I'm not finished with the problem yet because it asked for what my change was, and I'm paying with a five. So what did I pay with? Five dollars. What did it cost? Dollar ninety-six cents. And then I'm going to need to subtract because I'm finding the change. Hey neighbor, can I come borrow from you? I don't have anything. Let me go borrow from my neighbor. Five becomes four. He becomes ten. Zero comes back to borrow from the ten. Makes him a nine. He becomes 10. Have you noticed when we're getting change, we're going to have a lot of borrowing across zeros because you're usually using a $5 bill or a $10 bill, a $1 bill, $20 bill. 10 minus 6 is 4. 9 minus 9 is nothing. 4 minus 1 is 3. I should get back about $3.04. That seems reasonable because the two Hot Wheels, they were really, really close to a dollar a piece. If I get two of them, that's close to $2.00. So I should be somewhere around three bucks on my change. Last problem. Jeff has two quarters, one dime, and one nickel. How much more money does he need to buy a paddle ball? Well, in here I see much more, so I know I'm going to have much more minus in the problem somewhere. And the problem we have in this is he doesn't have enough money yet. So that must mean the paddle ball costs more than what he has. So the paddle ball is going to be on top, $1.49. Then we need to figure out how much money he's got. Two quarters, that would be twenty-five fifty. Add a dime on, 60 And a nickel on, $0.65. Cents. So he's got $0.65. Cents. And now he wants to buy the paddle ball, so we've got to figure out how much more money he needs. So we're going to subtract. 9 minus 5 is 4. 4 minus 6 can't do it. Let's go borrow. And line up the decimal point. We end up with 84 cents. I will say this about the answer. If your answer is less than a dollar, there are two possible ways you could write it. I can write it like this, 84 cents. I can also write it like this, 84 cents. I can't combine them. If you say this, decimal point 84 cents, that really means 84 one hundredths of a penny. So that's less than a penny. You're not buying anything with that. And I also don't want to have the dollar sign and the cent sign because then people don't even know what to do.
which one really counts? Is it dollars or is it cents? So we can't do both. But you can do this or you can do this. this I hope this video helped you with figuring up change and total costs when you're adding with money.